I've got with me Alex DeBell, the Vice President of Global Nutraceuticals and Innovation. And we just have a few questions that we want to ask you today. Awesome. Great to be here. All right. Let's start it off with the first question, which is, what is the difference between prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics? Yeah, good question. They sound very similar. Of course, the biotic portion is, is the same, but the pre, pro, and post mean something. So the pre is designating these are food for the probiotics, which are producing postbiotics. Maybe a little bit more on what that means. Probiotics are alive. These little microorganisms, the tiny factories inside of our gut, and they consume prebiotics. Prebiotics like fructooligosaccharide. Now, the saccharide portion there is a non-digestible sugar or a fiber, which is non-digestible for us, but it is digestible for the bacteria in our gut. So the prebiotic is the food for the probiotic, which produces the postbiotic. Awesome. So understanding those differences, um, this probiotic market, which encompasses the pre, the pro, and the post, is huge. Double-digit growth over the last 10 years. Right now, there are more people that consume a probiotic than a multivitamin every single day, and that's about 86% of households. So with all of the competitors that are out there, those that have 50 billion colony forming units and up to 1 trillion colony forming units. And then we have other competitors that are on the shelf that have only a billion and maybe only one strain. How do we choose? How do we make that selection between quality and substance without giving up the value? There's a lot of things that go into a quality microbiome supplement. You, you can't just look at one uh, parameter, like a CFU count, for example. There are a lot of different aspects that you should be considering. It's not all about the CFUs? It's not all about the CFUs. Okay. So you and I, we've talked a little bit. Dr. O brought this up. Dr. Brannick brought this up. In our discussions in looking at our existing line as well as forward, there are four critical factors in choosing a pre, pro, and postbiotic. The first one is the quality of the species and strains. The second is the potency. The third is the survivability. That's a word, I think, survivability. Yep, and then the fourth is backed by science. We really want that clinically tested species and strain. So let's start with the first one. Why is the quality of the species and strains so important when we're really looking to help improve our microbiome? Yeah, we need, um, there are many, you've heard in the previous calls that there are many different types of strains that we're exposed to that are living inside of our gut that are providing all these different benefits. And it makes sense then that we provide a variety of strains in our probiotic supplements. So if you look at PBSS Plus and PBSS Junior, for example, you see a variety of strains. And that diversity is key to having a robust microbiome. There are thousands of strains in the gut. Um, Dr. Brannick mentioned that. How are our strains different than the rest of the world's strains? And why is that last critical factor, backed by science, so essential? Yeah, there are thousands and thousands of different bacterial strains. And it's, it's really interesting because you can look at the genus and the species and the strain number. And there's some similarities between these, of course. You know, uh, different strains have a shared species or a shared genus. But when you get at that genetic level, what's happening with these bacteria, they're each unique, just like us. They're each unique and they perform different roles. And so when we talk about the bacteria in the microbiome supporting multiple areas of the body, this is possible because these bacteria are slightly different. And so we need to select bacteria that have been studied in robust clinical trials for these different health benefits that we're going after. And that's what we've done. So... Can we come back to my earlier question on the CFU count? Why is it that it isn't just about the total colony forming units when I'm looking at the back of a label? Yeah, so the colony forming units, and there, that's a way to designate how many cells are there, how many bacteria are in the product. And I lump the potency or the colony forming units together with the survivability because we're not just going after a really high number of CFUs, 
we're really looking to deliver those CFUs, those live functioning bacteria to the gut where they can perform their role. So survivability and CFUs or bacterial count go together. Are there competitors out there that, um, that may declare on package that their strains are only potent at the time of manufacture versus, and how do you dis distinguish between what the CFUs or the autofluorescent units are actually claiming on the label? Yeah, it's an important distinction. And it's one of the reasons, you know, we, we've been very careful with the formulation and design of these products to have that survivability. We want what we're claiming on the label, we want the consumers to have confidence that that number of bacterial cells is what they're consuming and what will survive in their gut. Some products, as you mentioned, may have a really high colony forming unit count at the time of manufacture, but that doesn't do us really any good unless that's what we're actually consuming. So we're less concerned about at the time of manufacture. We're really concerned about at the time of consumption because that's really keeping the consumer in mind. Sometimes I, I, I like to remind people that it only takes a little bit of the wrong kind of bacteria to make you sick. So you can understand that a healthy bacteria, a probiotic, doesn't need to be a trillion bacterial cells to provide that benefit. But what is really critical is that it gets to the right place alive, right? And so that goes to kind of the survivability. We need to have a delivery mechanism to get those bacteria to your intestines alive and functioning well. And we do that with uh, our dual chamber capsules, with our micro encapsulation, a couple of really unique features that are just really a, a nod to that survivability component. Awesome. The duo cap, that provides that outer layer and then that inner cap layer. It's something that's very proprietary and patented it really helps it get to the right place at the right time. That's right. And then the micro-encapsulated strains that are in PB Assist Junior, those also protect those strains and species and allow those to get into the right place at the right time. That's exactly right. We have acids throughout our gastrointestinal tract, and the stomach is designed to neutralize pathogenic bacteria, but we want those beneficial bacteria to survive. So... In the scientific world, in the academic world, you hear of two types. You have this transient, um, if you will, strain, and then you also have these ones that they, they take up residency and they stay a little bit longer, maybe a little bit like our family members. <laughs> they kind of come and go as they please, or they set up and maybe stay a little bit too long, or they're welcome and, and they set up camp and, and enjoy their stay. And um, tell, tell us a little bit more about the transient versus the residential strains. Yeah, so we're surrounded by bacteria. We have bacteria throughout us, but some of these are making our the mucosal lining of our, of our intestines a home. And they come and they camp out for a little while, but others are really functioning while they're passing through. So you, depending on the type of probiotic or the type of strain of bacteria, they need to be replaced and replenished regularly because they're not sticking around. And so that's why we, we really are recommending for people to use a probiotic product on a regular basis to help maintain that microbiome. Awesome. Well, the last point, I think we've covered all of them. We've got, first of all, the quality of the species and the strains. We've got the potency. You mentioned the survivability. So there's been an explosion in the last few years, really over the last 10 years, of new species being identified, new strains being identified, and testing methods on exactly uh, what those species and strains can do in the body. With all of the evidence that's mounting and the research that's constant, what are we doing at doTERRA to keep up with that? And is there anything that you'd like to hint to our audience members that would help them feel more confident with the things that we do have and then what's coming. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to remind people that we have some really cutting edge products um, with our PB Assist Plus and our PB Assist Junior. Since PB Assist Plus was introduced in 2009, it really paved the way as a trailblazer back when it was introduced. Top three product in the, in, in the entire supplement category. Yeah, it's I huge. think overall. And, and I think that's a reflection our customers know how important supporting the microbiome is. 
And so they continue to use these products and they're amazing. But as, as you mentioned, the research has come a long ways and it's really hot right now. And so um, we are actively capturing all of that latest research to put together in some pretty exciting new products that you probably need to come to convention to hear more about. Do you want to share a little bit more? Come on. Audience, do you want to hear more? Well, yeah, we can we can mention a little bit. We've got some pretty cool uh, revolutionary changes to our microbiome product offering. And we'll be really excited to introduce those at convention. You've heard a little bit about this, the importance of the microbiome in the previous calls with Dr. Oscarthorpe and, and Dr. Riggs. And of course, we're really zeroing in on all the research that has happened over the past 10 to 20 years. We mentioned prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics, even phages, um, and the roles of those. We're going to do more of a deep dive at convention. There's some really cool research. Okay, so convention is only a month away. What can people do right now to help support their microbiome health? Well, I begin supporting your microbiome by getting a convention ticket. <laughs> and then, of course, um, we've got a couple of amazing microbiome products that people should be using already. As I mentioned, bacteria are constantly moving through us. We need to replace them and be using them. And these PBSS Plus and PBSS Junior are amazing products to use. And then we've given a little bit of information for people. Do a little bit of research, do your homework, and come to convention. We can't wait to have those conversations with you.